Okay. Well, hi, Leanne, how are you? Hi, Tony, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, good. Um, was it uh, Man United yesterday? You came on as a sub, how was that? Man United yesterday, tough game yesterday, but we keep going, eh? And how are you finding the standard now? There's a lot more visibility of, of the, the game. We're, we're hearing a lot more about the games, a lot more big stars coming into the English game as well. Obviously, it's, um, it's great to be playing against the best. And as a young one growing up, I always wanted to play against the best, so I can't complain at all. I'm really enjoying it over there at the minute. And it's really nice um, that every game is so competitive and every, every team has individual talent. So it's quite nice, yeah. And have you noticed the standard improving? Yes, of course. I've been there now. This is my third year in the league. And from the first year coming in to this year, it's it's gone up massively. And even the hype behind the whole league and people saying that, that it's one of the best in the world and that. So it's really nice to be involved around, you know. Did you see Katie McCabe's goal? I seen it. Of course I did. Banger, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's great for Katie to be putting Ireland on the map with them type of goals. And hopefully soon I can do the same, eh? Well, you know, it's 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 great to have a, a goal like that in a week like this for Ireland. Yes, for sure. And it's um it's great publicity for the Irish national team, of course. And um it's great for her coming in on confidence too to Captain Ireland to hopefully a historic game. How important a week is it? You started against Germany, but clearly getting a, a result against them was going to be tough. But is this the most important game of the campaign? As Vera said in our latest interviews, that is like a cup final to us. And of course it is. It's a very big game and we're all looking forward to it. But we know how how much this game means to Ireland, the history behind it. Like we can get a chance to get to the playoffs. So we're all looking forward to it a lot. You expect him to start? Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> hope so too. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Hi, Leanne. Hi Bernard, how are you? How are you? It's Bernard. How are things? I'm great, thanks. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I, I suppose the end, you know, so much has been said about this game and this week. You know, you're still in contention, like you said, there for automatic uh, qualification and also the playoff. Do you, in some ways, you know, as you approach this week, do, do you dream big? Do you, do you stop sort of mentioning the word playoff and do you, are you still dreaming of that automatic qualification? Of course, yeah, we don't have that over minds as well but obviously um you gotta be realistic too and I definitely think we have a great chance of qualifying in both ways in the playoffs and both going straight through but let's just hope for the best and we're really going into the Ukraine game as I said a cup final and it's a massive game for for Ireland. How big of a game is it how would you put into words just just how massive a game this is for Ireland? Well when you look at Ireland's history, we've never actually fully qualified for a, a tournament. And this is this is probably our best chance at the minute. And um, every, every one of the girls is on board on that and are really looking forward to it. And we realise we realize what's to lose, you know, so we're really, we're really going for it. Tony touched on it there. You know, you see Katie's goal over the weekend. And I, I suppose so much visual is made of this, of this Ireland squad and the headlines they're making and how, how, how good you're all doing individually for, for, for a club level. Would you say confidence in the Ireland camp is at, a, is at an all-time high at the moment? Yes, for sure. And obviously, um, we've beat Ukraine before, so we know it's possible. And we'll go into the game quite confident, but we also know what there is to lose. So we got to get ahead from the start, you know. So what are you expecting from, from Ukraine this week? Obviously, we're in their, in their home turf, so it's going to be a tough game. And as we all know, even coming to Tallaght, it's quite a difficult game for away teams to get points. So um, I suppose we'll just go into it and we'll keep to our game plan and hopefully hit the back of the net, eh? <laughs> Best of luck, Leanne. Thanks, Amin. Thank you. Nicola McCarthy. Hey, Leanne. How are you doing? Hi, Nicola. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, just I suppose as a squad, Leanne, obviously it's uh, difficult and testing times for everyone, but just as a squad, how's everyone feeling and how have you kind of kept the camp, uh, you know, the morale up at the, at the present moment? To be honest, I've just got in off a flight there a few minutes ago. <laughs> but um, no, I've seen a few of them in the corridor and everybody's a big smile on their face, so we can't complain at all. And we're all looking forward to the game and happy to be here and part of the squad. 
and in between uh, times, and obviously you're probably in touch with yourselves, kind of in between games and as a squad uh, in the interim, in between games. Yes, of course. And um, obviously there was a month between the gap of the last game. And then um, we keep in contact through our group chats and all. Obviously, the players have a group chat that we can chat to on a daily basis and that. So it's nice just to keep in contact with familiar faces. Absolutely. And we heard yesterday from Vera that about the chartered flight um, as well. It's, you know, it's it's just a really a, a big step and, and a really nice step, I'm sure, as players and as a squad to to see, you know, things like this in, in the women's game. Of course. Um, what can I say? Women are coming up in the world, eh? <laughs> no, it's great. And it's um, it's great for a women's team in Ireland to be getting on a charter flight like that's a that's a big deal from a few years ago maybe that wouldn't have happened so yeah we're really looking forward to it just finally for me Leanne obviously you've got the the kind of weeks uh preparation the the the, the gulf of a week so you've got a lot of time together which is uh yeah, ideal for the the game that's in it yes yes for sure um and we knew coming out of the Germany game that Everybody wants to go back to their clubs and stay fit and healthy and hopefully get back in. And I hope everybody's in top form now coming into it. So, Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. And thanks a million. Emma Duffy. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Emma. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Um, I suppose just touching on, on Tony's points earlier, um, you seem to be really, really enjoying your football at the minute. I know you haven't had the easiest time the past while, but you're you're really enjoying it at club and country. Yes, of course. And um, it's quite nice playing football with a smile on your face, I must say. Yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. And obviously with COVID and that, it's been a bit restricted these days. But yeah, it is what it is. And I'm enjoying my football and enjoying my time in Ireland, so I can't complain. Good stuff. And then Leanne, this week obviously a massive, massive game. How do you personally, I suppose, just keep your mind focused on, on the job at hand and the girls alongside you as well? I suppose um just stick to the basics and training when it comes to training, do the simple things, stay switched on and kind of become a sponge and listen to everything Vera has to say and hopefully take it into the game and that'll get us through it. So we we believe in Vera and she can get us through it. So we're all behind her. Absolutely. And then just last one for me, Leanne. Um, I suppose you started against Germany last time out and you did loads of running up and down that wing and um, hopefully more opportunities will fall your way I suppose this time and the same with all the attacking players is that something you're really looking to focus on this week? Yes for sure obviously we knew Germany was one of the the top teams in the world and we're just looking forward to going into Ukraine and we know we could score against them before and obviously they can score against us so it's going to be it's going to be a tough game of course but We'll go into it quite confident, please God, anyway. Fantastic. Best of luck, Leanne. Thanks Thank you. Helen Coffee. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Hi, um, how are you? I'm good. Um, obviously, uh, you only need the draw to kind of get to the playoffs, but how important is it for you to focus on getting the win rather than maybe relying in the last 15 minutes and kind of sitting tight? Obviously, um, it would be a good confidence boost if we could get the win going into our next game, of course. And um, we'll just hope, we'll see how the game lays out and how it goes. And we're just hoping it'll go very well. And our week, our week's training will go well and everybody will be healthy going into the game. And I think I believe in the group of girls we have here. And I think we have a great chance. And last question from me. You've said in past interviews that you kind of pick one skill a week to kind of focus on. For this week, what's that skill kind of, what are you going to focus on for the next couple of days? We need to hit the back of the net to, to win the game, so I'll work on that one. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Rory O'Hagan. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Um, Vera said yesterday that Ukraine underestimated you guys in the first game. Is that something you felt as players? Um, I suppose, obviously, looking at us and not having qualified, you can look at it that way, but um listen we done the job on them last time and if they underestimated us hopefully we can show them again that they shouldn't underestimate us and are you feeling pressure going into this game or is that something you just had to shut out i suppose there's always a bit of pressure because it's obviously a big game and a historic game but um 
that's why we play eh, for the big games and we want to be there on the big days and get the big results. So, yeah, of course, there's a bit of pressure behind us. But as a team, we'll stick by each other and we'll all have each other's backs on the day. All right, thanks, Mel. Best of luck. Thank you. Anthony from RT. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm just wondering, have you spoken to Courtney about her potentially getting a chance this week with Marie's injury or has she mentioned anything to you? Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that Marie got injured last week, but I actually, I live with Courtney. We flew over together. Um, we obviously, it's great to be getting a certain place on the team, but we know that it's tough competition in the team too. So um, obviously Courtney, she'd love to start, of course, but football is tough sometimes. So we'll just go into the game and the best player will start, of course. So I don't know who that will be yet. And, and how much do you take out of the second half, particularly of that Germany game? I mean, given Germany, I think, have scored 16 goals against Ukraine. Uh, you held them scoreless in the second period. I think Vera mentioned afterwards that you sort of that the players were able to analyze the first half and adjust how they approach that second half really effectively. So, I mean, how much do you take that coming into this match? Yes, of course, it's a big boost that we got 45 minutes without Germany scoring on us, and um, we'll go into the Ukraine game feeling good and offensively, and of course. During halftime in that Germany game, we have great analysis guys that went through what we needed to work on. And, of course, we'll look at that during the week this week too. So hopefully we'll have all covered and go into it pretty positive. And just finally, Jan, it's, it's been, I think, around a year since you played Ukraine. Do you think Ireland are a better team now than when you when you played them last time? Um, yes, of course. And we have more players going abroad and playing, playing in um, some of the best leagues in the world. So... I think we're we're pretty prepped this time, Rand. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Okay, uh, switch to the daily section uh, embargo for tomorrow. Mark McCadden, do I start? Yep. Cheers. How you doing, Leanne? Hi. Um, good. Thanks. But big picture, can can this be um, women's football's Euro '88 moment? Um, you know, something that really kickstarts uh, a series of of, of qualifications. Of course, yeah, and we're all hoping that, of course, um, the massive game and everybody knows the whole hype behind the game. But we'll just um, we'll just focus on the game and hopefully it'll go our way. Uh, and for you as one of the younger members of the squad, um, although there are, uh, like, I suppose this, this can be uh, something that's, uh, this this type of game can be something that you can kind of experience th for a long time now in terms of just uh, you know getting to finals or, or being in contention to get to finals. Yes, of course, and um, I suppose I feel like one of the older ones now in the squad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. And as a young player, you want to be in this position and experience all these games and be around a team that's going to qualify for a big tournament and. We're just hoping we'll get to England. Super. Best of luck. Thank you. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Leanne. Um, just referring to what was said earlier about the, the charter plane being a, a, a kind of a red letter day, really, for not just the, the soccer team, but um, Irish women's sport. Does Do you get a sense that um, amongst the squad there'll be not just the pressure of the game, but the pressure of having to almost, even though it's justified, repay that faith that has been placed in you by the by the FAI in these difficult times? That's a good question, I suppose. Um, now, of course, there's pressure, as I said, but growing up, my parents would always say, pressure's for tires, Leanne, you want to perform on the big days, and that's why you train so hard week in, week out to get there. Um, of course, it's great that the FAI are behind us, and we appreciate that, giving us a chartered flight in these terrible conditions at the minute with COVID. But um, they're doing that because they believe in us and we believe in us that we're going to get a result. So now nah, there's a bit of pressure, but obviously we're, we're going to we're going to get a result. And just in terms of the um, the game plan, and as you mentioned there, the halftime analysis, which almost... Um, really narrowed down and focused the game plan it was an obvious difference between the two halves 
in Germany. That faith, it seems to be very important in terms of its mutual, like Vera has belief in what you do for her and you have belief in what she does for you on, on both sides of the ball. And obviously um, this week it's going to be important on both sides of the ball because it's going to be much more of an even match like the Tala game, I guess. So just just speak about how that how that faith translates for you as a player. How does she get that message across and how do you bring that onto the field? Of course, um, Vera has brought us this far so far. So um, we have lots of belief in her. And of course, she's putting us on the pitch to get the results. So she's belief in us. But um, we just stick to, we'll do our tactics and we'll train and see what we have to do in training. And we'll bring that into the game. And I know we're good enough players to go into this game and hopefully come out with a positive. Lovely. If I, did, you, did you get on yesterday? No, I didn't play yesterday. Okay, was that a tactical thing or did you, what was the chat um, with the coach afterwards? We lacked a few injuries and that, so there's a few switches yesterday. Okay, but is, is that a big problem? You weren't carrying an injury or anything or a knock? No, I'm I'm good. Thanks. Okay, okay. Cheers, thank you. All over here. Hi, Leanne, how are you doing? Hi, John. Okay. Uh... Yeah, just in terms of your own international career, we know obviously the last campaign was a big one for you under Colin. Um, but do you feel you in this one have you hit your stride, or is there more to come? Um, I'd like to think there's more to come from Leanne in that aspect, and of course the coaches do too because they believe in me to put me on the pitch. So um, I'll just keep my head down, work hard, and hopefully it'll come for me. And just your memories of that game against Ukraine. I know you came on for the last 20 minutes, but how did you find them to play against? Um, I suppose I was out for a few months before that game, so I probably wasn't at my fittest and that to, to really be a big impact in that game, which I know. And um, I think, as you can see, Rihanna got great goals. Like There was a few people on the goal scoring sheet that day. So I think... Um, Definitely for us that we can play against these and we can play good football against this team. And and just sort of touching on what Mark said about this being a great opportunity for yourselves, you know, to make history and reach a major tournament. Like when you were at West Ham there during the World Cup two years ago, would you have heard stories from players or since then about their experiences at that tournament in France? Of course, I was actually, um, I was living in a house with one of the Scottish girls and I think they had qualified for the first time for a major tournament in, or maybe in a long time and it was massive hype behind it and they actually went on to do quite well. So um, it was quite actually, I was a bit jealous them going off to it and we weren't going, but listen, that's what you have to deal with and now look where we are, we have a great chance now. So we keep training hard and hopefully it'll come. Okay, thanks, Leah. Thank you. Okay, guys, I have uh, Rihanna here. Um, hopefully, you can hear me there. Yeah. Um, Tony, do you want to get going there, Rihanna? Yes. Hi, Rihanna. How are you doing? Hey, Tony. Good. Thank you. How are things? I'm great. Yeah, very good. Um, Rihanna, I was looking back yesterday, um, the the game against Ukraine, and um, obviously you were involved in in all three goals and. Would you say that was maybe your 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 best day in an Irish shirt? Um, yeah, without a doubt. To be honest, um, it was definitely one one of the best for me. And I think as as a country and as a whole, I think that day was was fantastic. I think the day itself, we had a record attendance in Tala, which was fantastic. We knew going into the game that Ukraine were ranked higher than us. Um, obviously, it was Vera's first game. It was new management, new setup. So. Going into that game, there was excitement kind of from, from all angles. And I think the performance that we, we showed on the day um, really put us in, in good step as to how we want to play in the future going forward and obviously put us in, in a great position in the group. And then obviously for me personally, to get my first senior international goal is, is a day that, that I'll never forget. And the fact that we got the three points out of it as well makes it that little bit sweeter. Scoring was great, of course, but like you were, you were a provider as well that day. 
yeah, um, obviously it was was great to get the the assist for Katie's goal first, um, which which kind of set the tone early on in the game, and we kind of built from there. And obviously going into the second half, we were a bit disappointed that we went in at halftime level, and um, we thought that we we dominated the game, and and obviously a, a few mistakes on on our behalf defensively, yet you let Ukraine back into the game. But we we came out in the second half the same way we came out in the first half, and I think it ended up being an own goal, um, that was the decisive. The decisive goal, but I think our performance in in the game, we won three points. Yeah, but I suppose this week you're going to look on why you let them back into the game. Yeah, um, obviously at, at international level, at top level, um, you're not going to get away with that. Um, we, were, we were disappointed, we were 2 nil up and we were playing well and I think it was from two set pieces that they, they ended up scoring. Um, one was on the, the second phase of, of, of a corner. Um, so that's definitely something that we're we're going to have to look at. Um, it, it's going to be a tight game. So in terms of we, we need to make sure that we're, we're structured defensively and, and we're focused from the, the first whistle to the last whistle. There's been a lot of talk over the last 24 hours about you guys and getting the charter, which is great news and, and rightly so. But how worried are you about the COVID situation when you see what happened the men's side, their their games in the last couple of weeks and how, despite the bubble, that COVID got into the camp? Yeah, obviously, hearing all the reports that, that, that came out of the men's game, I think in, in terms of COVID throughout the world at the minute, um, I think a lot of countries are going through what they are calling the, the second phase and, and cases are starting to rise quite rapidly. Um, so for us, obviously, the last camp, um, we were fortunate enough that we managed to get through the, the whole camp without any kind of COVID cases or any or any scares. But for us, we know that we have to up our ante um, from the first minute we're in camp to the time we leave camp and to the time we go back to our clubs. Um, obviously, seeing with what happened with the men's team, it hits that little bit closer to home that you can't be too careful. Um, so in terms of us, we, we have great medical staff here and we have great guidelines. So we're just making sure that we that we follow them and we take no risks and make sure that we have everybody on that flight to Ukraine, but also have everybody available for um, for the game on Friday, which is the most important part. Very best of luck to you, Rihanna. Thank you, Donnie. Sorry, are you just fixing the light? <laughs> <laughs> Having a party here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Bernard O'Toole. Rihanna, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are things? Good stuff. Just, just to follow up on what Tony was talking about there with the COVID situation, how much trickier, I suppose, is it at, at, at international level, because like you said there, you're, you're totally in camp, whereas I know at club level, OK, you have to abide by the restrictions and stuff, but you, you still have that opportunity to go home and kind of, in some ways, switch off from being being constantly switched on and conscious of what you have to do for COVID. Um, obviously, it's a completely different setup um, in terms of from our clubs and that we've got so many different players coming from different clubs and, and, and different countries. Um, obviously, for those of us playing at professional clubs, we, we are fortunate enough that we, we do get tested um, with our clubs. But it's great that the, the girls playing at home in Ireland, they have been able to get tested before they come into camp. Um, and then obviously, first day of camp, then we're going to get tested as well. Um, but obviously, we don't have the luxury of, of going home to our own houses and, and being able to switch off. But I suppose any of us playing international football, um, yes, the COVID is a new situation, but we're, we're used to traveling, we're used to being away, we're used to being out of our comfort zone. Um, I think it's just important that we all work together. As I said, we have the guidelines, we all have the protocols, and it's very important that we all stick together, we all help each other out. And as I said, the, the, the task here is to make sure that we have everybody available for Friday's game. Does it give a different kind of feel about the place? Yeah, it's <laughs> camp is, is, is definitely a, that, that little bit different. Um, obviously, we're we're all very familiar with each other. Um, we're all very friendly. We all get on off the pitch. Um, we're all used to kind of gathering around each other. Even like Irish, we, we love when we greet each other, we love to give each other hugs. So obviously that's all been taken away from it. But we're all fortunate that we're able to be here, obviously, with everything that's going on around the world. The fact that football is still going on is fantastic. The fact that we're still able to play these qualifiers, even though they are later than what was originally planned. The fact that we are able to play them is, is fantastic. So we'll, we'll put everything else aside. Um, and as I said, the important part is that we all remain healthy and we all hopefully remain COVID-free and, and can kid out on Friday. 
Speaking of Friday, is there a sense, you know, I suppose for the last couple of years, was all the talk that, you know, women's football in this country is moving in the right direction, moving in the right direction. Is there a sense now that this could really be the start of something special in terms of you have that aim now, if you secure the playoff, then there's a playoff, then we're talking about talking about Euros? Yeah, um, obviously we, we've always said that women's football is going in the right direction. There's still a lot to do, but as long as we keep moving forward and we keep seeing the progress, and, and that's the important part. Um, obviously, as a nation, we've seen the, the disappointment of the men's team in, in, in the playoffs, um, obviously, last week. And that still still hurts me after after watching that game. It was a fantastic performance by the men, and, and they were just so unlucky. Um, but for us, obviously, we, we've put ourselves in, in a great position. Um, but we know there's still a, a lot more to do. Um, Friday's game is massive um, we know exactly what's at stake um, just like we knew going into the Ukraine game back in back in Tala back in October um, but obviously if we, if we can go out and get the job done and, and get to that playoff that's a, a major thing for, for the country um, and obviously if we can do that hopefully it'll boost a lot of people in terms of what is going on at the minute um, but for us, um, we know exactly the, the task that's ahead it's, it's going to be a, a difficult, difficult game but one that we're, we're definitely looking forward to Nicola McCarthy. Hi, Rihanna, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are things? Good, thank you. Not bad at all. Um, just in terms of, you mentioned the kind of structure and the defensive setup. Obviously, you scored three last time out um, in the home the home fixture. How important will that attacking threat uh, be, be uh, on Friday, do you think, Rihanna, as well, as the defensive setup? Yeah, it's going to be massive. I think since since Vera's come in in October, she's on about, and you can see that she's the style of football that she's implementing. She's wanting us to play football. She's wanting us to attack where possible. And in terms of that, it's playing positive attack in football, but we can't forget about the defensive structure that we have and obviously we have a good base of that we've always had good foundations about being hard to beat, so it's about building on that. But definitely in terms of the game, it's going to be can we defend well? And if we defend well, that will then allow us to attack well. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be focusing on that. We have some fantastic attacking players in, in the setup and we are starting to learn to, to play to our strengths, to play to each other's individual strengths. Um, I think we've done it well against Ukraine the last time. I think we, we've shown it well in patches, but we need to do it well over 90 minutes. And I think we can, we can improve on, on all of the games that we have played. Brilliant. And just finally from me then, um, just in terms of uh, the, the league and having, you know, games under your belt in the, in the FAWSL, how important, you know, does that, uh, will that be, do you think, and how does that come into play uh, in international fixtures? Yeah, obviously coming into international fixtures, you want as many of your squad to have played as, as many minutes as possible. Um, ultimately, you can train as much as you want, but if you're not getting those, those game minutes in, that, that match fitness, but also being able to make the decisions on the pitch, it, it's all about playing. Um, so for me personally, obviously, it, it's been good to get minutes in, in every game that we've played so far with Brighton. And obviously, I'm playing at a different level in the, the Women's Super League now, so hopefully that will stand to me. But we've got a lot of players that have been playing a lot of minutes since the seasons have kicked off and I, I think we're definitely in a better situation kind of fitness wise and, and minutes wise this camp as we were um, in the last camp strictly because we've we've had more games under our belt. Sorry just one more round if it's okay I was just working with with Hope you know Brighton and Vera you know international level two uh, women with, with vast amount of experience uh, in the game um, it must be a, a an interesting time for you to work with two fantastic women. Yeah, definitely. If you look at both their, their playing and, and their coaching CVs, the two of them, in terms of the women's game, I don't think you, you'll find any anyone better. Um, it's fantastic, obviously, to see the, the two different coaching philosophies, but in terms of learning from the, the two managers every day is definitely a learning curve and their knowledge of the game is second to none. And, and I definitely feel that since Vera's come in, since I've gone to, to Brighton in January, I think my knowledge of the game and, and also my overall game has improved. And I, I think that's the important part as a player is that you're, you're always learning, you're always improving. Um, you're only as good as your, your next game, really. Thank you, Rihanna. Good luck on Friday. Thanks, William. Thank you. Philip Egan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Rihanna. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are things? Very well. Um, obviously, a very high-profile knee injury over the weekend. Uh, Virgil van Dijk come back stronger than ever. You've gone through this experience yourself. I'm sure you're proof that players can recover and get stronger. Do you think after you come through such a serious injury, you feel both physically and mentally stronger? Uh, 
Um, yeah, um, obviously a, a serious injury like that is is a long one. Um, there, there's no shortcuts in, in terms of the, the work and, and the graft that you have to do to, to get back on the pitch. I know for me personally, I definitely learned a lot about myself mentally. Um, I was able to, to push myself to, to new limits. And I think that definitely helped me not only on the pitch, but, but off the pitch in, in everyday life as well. And in terms of physically, I think... Me personally, um, I think I'm in the best shape that I, I've been in. Um, I think in in my whole career, even before I sustained any of the the knee injury, so it, it definitely is proof that if you put your mind to it, um, and you put in the work, you can definitely. There's no reasons why you can't come back, um, better than better than ever. And just in terms of playing with Brighton now with the the Irish contingent there as well, it must be just. Is this the best fun you've had as a footballer? Um, yeah, obviously we've got um, myself, Megan Connolly, and, and Denise O'Sullivan playing at Brighton, which is, which is fantastic. Obviously, we, we we've played alongside each other internationally for the for the last number of years, and myself and Denise we played underage together as well. And funnily enough, the three of us are actually living together as well. Um, so it's always nice to have that that familiar face. Um, for me, it's obviously my my first step up into a professional environment, so I'm really enjoying the fact that I don't have to go to work, kind of sit at a desk, kind of Monday to Friday day for eight hours and and then do the training on the side so definitely enjoying that um and i'm, I'm slowly starting to, to find my form over there as well so yeah I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and just one final one for me obviously the ukraine game the significance of it and what's at stake but also the fact that it was the first fixture of vera it's a year since what do you think has improved vastly since vera took over um, obviously, I think from from previous managers, we, we had a foundation, and we all knew that under, under Colin defensively, we 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 had that foundation. And and then when Vera came in, um, at the time she came in, it's allowed us to progress kind of in our attacking form. Um, I I think that's been the we've seen glimpses of what our attacking players can do. You you look at the likes of Kate McCabe, Denise O'Sullivan, Leanne Cairn, and um, fantastic players going. Forward. It's time that we've started to play to each other's strengths, and I think Vera has definitely, definitely helped that. And we are looking to play more of a, an attacking game, and I think we, we've shown that. And um, we've a lot more to come. I think there's a lot more to come from us individually and collectively, uh, and hopefully under Vera, and um, as we've seen progress so far, we can continue to see that. Okay. Best of luck on Friday. Thanks, Rihanna. Thank you. Emma Duffy. Hi, Rihanna. Hi Emma, how are things? Uh, all good, yourself? Uh, I just have one quick one for you. I suppose you mentioned um, Denise there and you mentioned Katie there and it's fantastic to see obviously the likes of yourself and many others flying the flag so high over in England and further afield. That must give you great confidence after the weekend you're coming in bouncing off. I suppose Katie's goal yesterday was quite a highlight. Um, so yeah, confident ahead of Friday. Yeah, obviously confidence is key and, and that comes from, from everyone playing and obviously Katie's playing in, in a fantastic Arsenal team this season. They've they've started the league very well and, and Katie personally has been been in fine form and you can see that with the, the goal that she got yesterday. Um you've seen Denise has come into the women's super league and hasn't phased her whatsoever. Um Denise has always shown her qualities no matter where she's played and, and she showed that in her short spell that she's been in um, with Brighton as well, which obviously I, I have the luxury of seeing it day in, day, day out in, in training, but others are now starting to see Denise kind of on that world stage in the Women's Super League and, and it's fantastic. Um, as I said, for us as a team, it's important that the players are playing. Um, you look at Amber Barrett in Germany, um, her team have started the league fantastically. She's got three goals in three games and it's important that we're all confident coming into camp and obviously that confidence will feed into each other and we just need everybody in kind of their, their best form going into Friday um, and, and we'll see what happens then. Super, thanks so much Rihanna, that's a look. Hi Rihanna, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are things? Ah, Grant, how do you find preparing for a side as structured defensively as Ukraine? Um, obviously, for for us, it's it, it's a different challenge. Um, obviously, playing against the bigger teams, you look at the likes of Germany. We knew going into that game that they were going to have a, a lot of the ball. Um, so so this time, um, the last time we played Ukraine, that they played with, with five at the back, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do the same thing this time around. Um, obviously, they're coming off the back of a a good result against Greece the last time around for them. Um, so. Who knows what way they're going to set up, but we, but we will prepare. Um, for a team that does set up defensively, as I said, we're looking to work on our attacking sense, but we'll, we'll look at not trying to force things, trying to be patient, trying to do the right things at the right time, and and hopefully we can we can get a good performance and and get that win on Friday. 
Fantastic. And I'm sorry to bring it back to COVID now, but we were talking to Vera yesterday and she was telling us all about people wearing masks all the time and extra precautions. Has that made, or do you think it'll make time on the training pitch even more important, even on a tactical level and then on a personal level in that sense that you're able to see people and communicate a little bit more? Um, yeah, I think for us, uh, any time we have on the pitch this week is going to be important. Um, obviously, if you look at the the whole kind of this window and um, the international window as such, um, because we play early in the window, our game is Friday. And um, so in terms of everybody in, obviously, we had players that played Saturday. We had players that played yesterday. So in terms of having the whole squad together, today is the first day that we're going to have the whole squad together. So in terms of every minute we have on the pitch, it is vital in terms of analysing what's gone on previously and analysing what's going to come on, on Friday. Um, but definitely, obviously, walking around the hotel in terms of meetings, in terms of trying to limit that contact with each other in a closed environment. Obviously, once you're on the pitch, it, it's open and, and it's more free. So so definitely, it, it will be important that we, we use that time wisely. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. Rory O'Hagan. Hi, Ryan. How are things? I'm good, thank you. How are things? I'm good, thanks. Um, Vera suggests today that Ukraine underestimated you guys in the first game. Is that something you felt as players? Um, well, obviously, going going into the game, we knew that they were seeded higher than us um, in the group. Um, we, we obviously focused on what we knew of them and, and kind of the footage that we had on them. But it was all about implementing our game and, and kind of putting them on the back foot. And I think that we'd done that early doors. Um, obviously, they... they, they possibly expected something different from us and, and did underestimate us back then. Um, obviously, they, they've seen it firsthand by playing against us and obviously they have a lot more access to obviously what's gone on in the group. So I think that Friday's game will, will be a different a, a, a different game. I think they, they will be a different outfit. Um, obviously, they've got a lot to prove and, and it is like a cup final, kind of a, a winner takes all sort, um, sort of a job on Friday. So it, it, it's going to be a, a tough one, um, but, but one that we're certainly ready for. As you mentioned, that winner-take-all kind of aspect to it, is there kind of pressure on you now heading into the game? Do you feel that pressure? Are you just trying to shut all that out? Um, no, I don't. I don't think we feel pressure. Um, obviously, we we we've put ourselves in this position, and um, we we've prepared well for every game that we've done so far. Um, obviously, we've done our analysis on on other teams, and it's our performances so far that have put us in this position. We haven't been relying on anyone else, and and it's great that we're in this position and going into Friday's game. It, it's in our hands. Um. So in terms of that, yes, there's added pressure. There's always going to be pressure in a game like that. But I think we, we, we'll use it to our advantage. And we won't let the, it's important that we don't let the occasion get to us, that we stick to the game plan, that we are all singing from the same hymn sheet, you can say, and, and that we're all focused and prepared for Friday. And that's what this week is about. Thanks, Mel. Best of luck. Anthony from RT. Hi, Rihanna. Hi, Anthony. Thank you. Uh, just to go back to the Germany game, and you spoke about your own progress and improvement over the last year. I mean, do, do you personally use a game like that, given the calibre of the opposition and how difficult it is, to sort of gauge your improvement your, in, in terms of your fitness and, and your all-around game? Um, yeah, I, I think it is, it is important to, to use those games. Obviously, we knew how much of a, a challenge and a battle it, it, it was going to be going into that game. And obviously, there's aspects of that game that you can take positivity from. But then there's also aspects of that game where we know we need we're getting to a stage now where we don't just want to like contain the bigger teams. We want to be able to contest with them. We want to be able to go toe to toe with them. And it is important that we do analyze those sort of games. And um, I think for me personally, um, I've been exposed to a couple of those games already this season um, with Brighton playing against Man City, playing against the likes of your Arsenals and I'm playing against obviously German, Germany with, with the Irish team. And if I look back to even say a, a year ago, I wouldn't have had those sort of games under my belt um, and I definitely wouldn't have been able physically to, to get through those games. So I think for me, looking back on those and looking back on playing 90 minutes against Germany, playing 90 minutes against Man City, I think that kind of stands for itself and and says a lot about how far I've come. But I know for me personally, there's a lot more to come for me. And I, I just hope that I continue to kind of go from strength to strength, both physically and, and technically on the ball then as well. And I, I, mean, I know you can't look beyond Friday at the moment, but are you relishing the chance to have another go at, at Germany? Um, obviously, we... we few lessons against Germany the last time um, but as I said we haven't even looked that far ahead um, our focus since the final whistle of that Germany game has been the Ukraine game on Friday and nothing has changed there and um, this week is all about Ukraine 
and we won't be looking any further than that. Um, as I said, your most important game is always your next game, and, and that's certainly the case at the minute. OK. Thanks, Rihanna. Thank you. OK, we're going to switch to uh, the embargo section for daily newspapers. Mark McFadden. Cheers. Uh, hey, Rihanna. Hey, um, I suppose Irish football, is, is, men's and women's, has been littered with close calls, whether it's uh, qualification campaigns, playoff defeats and so on. What gives you guys the belief that um, this can be the big breakthrough moment for, for this, this team? I think for us, the, the biggest thing has been us as a squad and, and where we've put ourselves. I think we've put ourselves in a great position, as I've said, but we've also had some fantastic performances along the way. We've had different kind of performances, and I think we showed a lot of character in the last Ukraine game. Uh, we were 2 and up and we went in at halftime 2-2, and I think maybe previously we would have let that get to us try to change our game plan even though there was no need but um I, I think we showed a lot of character and and a lot about us we still came out in the second half and we still played the way we wanted to play even though we knew that they were going to apply pressure um and I think we can take a, a lot from that game but then also the the games against Greece um the game against Germany and obviously the two games against Montenegro I think in terms of that, there's a lot of positives for us to look at, um, but we know that we, we can't underestimate the Ukrainians going into this game. Um, we may have beaten them before, but it's a completely different setup. Obviously, it, it's a year since we played them. A lot has changed, both on and off the pitch for, for both squads, so we know the task that is ahead of us. Well, you mentioned the going in, uh, uh, good, losing a two-goal lead against Ukraine last time. Do you believe the setbacks, the, the draw in Greece and so on, do you believe those setbacks have strengthened you guys? Um, definitely, I, I think the draw, the draw in Greece, um, definitely. I think obviously we, we scored um, early on in, in the first half and to concede the way we did so late on in that game, um, I think that one hurt us. Um, I think we, we had to go away and, and, and have a look at kind of us as a whole, us as a unit, kind of our mentality going into games and, and obviously being able to sustain the pressure that you are going to get in games. Obviously, throughout 90 minutes, games go back and forth, back and forth, and you do need to sometimes sustain that pressure for periods of time. And I think we've learned from that. Um, obviously, I think the Ukraine game is, is, is similar. Yes, they may set up defensively, but as I said, throughout 90 minutes, they, they are going to have their spell. Um, so I think we, we, we've grown from that and hopefully we've learned from that and, uh, and we'll be able to, to deal with that. Super. Best of luck. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Dave hey, Kelly. Hey, Rihanna. Um, a question about yourself, then a couple of better officials, if you don't mind. First, your, yourself. Um, I remember, I think after the Ukraine game, actually, your performance and Vera speaking to us afterwards deep into the night just about how she spoke to you in terms of trying to get you to come out of yourself in terms of her confidence she saw something maybe a lack of confidence i don't know whether it was you're still playing here or you just seem to lack that sense of of knowing uh, as much about yourself and she seemed to know more and was trying to get that across can, can you re remind me about how that kind of interaction was with Vera and how it has helped you? Yeah, so obviously from from Vera's first day in, obviously we all had conversations with Vera. Obviously she she was given information on us. She she'd done her studies on each of us individually, and and throughout that camp, obviously it was trial and error. Obviously she was trying to get used to certain players in certain positions, trying to find her best eleven for the day. And I just remember during that camp, we we had different conversations on the pitch about th trying new things and um, trying to stretch them in behind. They would leave space trying to time my runs, trying to be connected, but obviously us be connected as a unit from the back four through to midfield and, and to that attacking unit. And I think as the week went on, I think we all bought into it. We all seen what she was trying to do. Things were coming off on training, little patterns of play. And I think going into that game, then seeing how things could change on the training pitch so quickly, I think going into that game, I think we were all boosted with confidence um, I think for me personally um, it was my first kind of proper spell going from starting the Montenegro game under Tom to then starting the, the Ukraine game under Vera I think it was the only time that I've ever started two two games in a row so that was added confidence for me and I think I was fitter than I'd been 
to that point at, at that time. And I think just the way we started that game, then we all grew into it. I got touches on the ball and I was involved. And I think as a striker, some games, especially at international level, you can go 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes without touching the ball. And obviously it turns into a, a different kind of a, a ball game, different kind of a battle. But I think from the, the, the first minute um, of that Ukraine game, kind of getting your, your first couple of touches um, once they come off, once you make a good run, you get the ball and your teammates see I think I just grew in confidence as, as the game went on. And just, just a brief supplementary. I mean, I think you had a two-on-two two against Germany the last time. Was that kind of fatigue entered the decision-making a little bit? Um, yeah, 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 possibly. Um, obviously, against the Germans, it, it's a different task, obviously, off the ball. Um, you're, you're defending for, for a lot of the game. And, and unfortunately, you look at the stage of the season then that that game came as well. Um, I think we had two competitive club games under our belt and kind of just, just the start of the season. So obviously we're a month further down the line. Um, you're hoping that not only me, but, but everyone has that kind of match sharpness back and, uh, and, and hopefully we, we'll, we'll see that on Friday. Great. And just a couple of the officials. First of all, what happened that red card that wasn't a red card yesterday? <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm, I, I was unsure at the time, and um, apparently Kaylee Green got booked in in the first half. I I don't remember. I remember the tackle, but I don't remember seeing the referee give her a yellow card. And then the tackle in the second half, I just remember the referee talking to her again, and and um, there was no real commotion on the pitch. Like they weren't shouting for a red card they weren't appealing for a red card we were kind of bewildered as, as to what was going on and I think in the end the referee um, came to the conclusion that she hadn't booked Kaylee in the first half and uh, and ultimately that's why, why Kaylee stayed on the pitch yeah yeah the, the, and and listen I presume you've seen it millions have around the world uh, the Sion Massey incident with Aguero I mean how did that make you feel looking at it um, obviously, I, I, I think looking at it, we were always told as players, one, we're not to confront the officials, two, we're definitely not to put our hands on the officials, whether that's a, a male or, or a female. It, it's just unprofessional. Um, you look at any any kind of work environment, um, it, it, it's frowned upon. Your, it, it's not right to put your hands on someone, whether it's in a friendly gesture or, or not. Um, obviously seeing that video over and over again, he shouldn't have done it. And I think himself, he knows that he shouldn't have done it. And there is no place, whether it's a man putting his hand on a female or a female putting herself on her hands on, on a man. It, it's just not accepted in a professional environment. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good answer. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, John Paul. Hi, Rihanna. Hey, John. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How are things? Good, thanks. Good. Yeah, just um, in terms of what you said earlier, that you feel you're in your best shape in your career. I know when you went over to Brighton, originally they were managing your game time, giving you bits of games here and there. Are you now at a stage where you're totally unrestricted in terms of what you do in training and minutes with your knee? Yeah, um, so unfortunately when I signed for Brighton in January, I had picked up a slight knee, slight knee niggle um, in our cup final back in November with Wexford Utes. So when I signed for Brighton, I was only rehabbing that and only kind of getting back into kind of training environment. So my brief spell there before obviously coronavirus um, shut down the world was kind of managed and my training sessions were tailored that little bit. But I think that time during lockdown, knees or anything touch wood um, there, there's no restrictions with that um, I'm in full training and um, I'm in a position to be selected for games um, obviously selection come down to, to, to the manager and obviously their their preferences and their decisions um, but I have been able to, to feature in all of our games so far this season and and just on that I know you went on a very short-term contract uh, at the start was that something that you felt they had to convince themselves as well in terms of your fitness before you got the extra deal in the summer um well yeah i think obviously i signed on a, on a six month which was going to tie me up until the end of last season and um, i think for them it was about seeing me in that professional environment and um, not only as a player but but at, 
as a person, I think for Hope, um, her selections in her squad, it, it's not just about the player on the pitch, it's about how they are off the pitch. And I suppose that initial six months um, that I signed for would have given them the, the perfect opportunity, obviously, to see how I interact on the pitch, how I interact off the pitch, and then obviously my, my capabilities and, and my physical levels on the pitch. Um, obviously, I was unfortunate that I think I was only there for six or seven weeks before the everything came to a halt. But... I was fortunate enough that they they seen enough in me in that short spell to to warrant me a, a one year contract, which I signed in, in June, which will tie me up until the end of this season. Yeah, and and just on the arrival of Denise, um, you know, she said herself it was due to the COVID restrictions and uh, transiting from America over the international break. You know, like Vera has spoken of, of her as one of the best midfielders in the world. Um, when you heard she was coming available. She probably had to pick a clubs to go to, not just in England but abroad. Did you have a word of hope, or did she did she seek out some maybe comments from the Irish girls on Denise? Um, well, obviously, when there there was word that obviously Denise wanted to come to Europe, obviously because it it wasn't feasible for her to remain in the US and get game time um, and be able to come home for for these qualifiers. Um, Brighton were were straight on the case. They 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 were wanting to to get her attention and to see could they they sign her on that short term contract. I think obviously the fact that myself and and Megan were were playing at Brighton, um, it obviously helps in in terms of Denise having um familiar faces there but but i think the the club um itself i think their recruitment team that they done well in, in terms of talking to her agent and and finding out kind of what denise wants and requires as a player and i think in terms of that obviously myself and megan may or may not have had a, a conversation or two with denise but it was ultimately down to the the recruitment team at brighton and, and obviously denise's agent that, that got that deal across the line and we're delighted to have her and um, as i said we've seen in an irish jersey how consistent denise has been for for many years now at, at senior level and you see at, at, at america um at her team the courage she's she's been fantastic and, and phenomenal she's been their their standout player for for definitely the last two seasons and, and i the short spell that she's been in England so far, she's she, she's shown her qualities, and I think she's got seven more games before um, she finishes up at Christmas, and I think she's only going to grow from strength to strength in those games, which is great for us as as a nation, but also great for Denise as an individual that that, that she can put it up in what's classed as one of the best leagues in the world at the minute. And on the international side of things, like you're probably after what happened with the men last week, we could definitely do with a lift here in terms of qualification or even the playoff. But the first thing we have to do is score a goal, um, which didn't happen with the men's team in the three and the big games and the 21s as well last week. Um, you mentioned earlier you don't feel a pressure, but as the central striker, which you probably be, do you feel a bit of responsibility in terms of going out and that will be part of the job on Friday? You probably will need to score as a team. Yeah, um, obviously football is all... all, all all about goals obviously to, to win a game you, you need to score more than, than than your opposition and obviously it is a shame that the men had some fantastic performances but obviously none of that matters because they, they couldn't put the, the ball in the net unfortunately um, I think for us as a team going forward I think we have plenty of goals in the team you look at the, the qualification campaign so far I think Denise has scored Katie scored three Diane has scored obviously I've scored Amber scored so in terms of that, there we, we have goals throughout the team, which is always going to be important. Obviously, as a striker, if you speak to myself, if you speak to Amber, if you speak to Leanne or you speak to Kira, who can play in those central roles as a striker going into any game you, you want to score. And, and that's going to be no different on, on Friday. But ultimately, it is a, a team goal. It's about whoever's in the best position. Can we set them up? And obviously, if you end up in, in that position in front of goal, it is about taking your chances in a lot of games, um, especially at international level, chances are few and far between. So it is about being clinical when we do get those chances. OK, thanks, Rihanna. Thank you. All over. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, Gary. How are you, Rihanna? Um, just something, something you touched on earlier on about you were talking about when you went to Brighton at the start of the year leaving behind a sort of a, almost a full-time working environment as well as playing football over here and the environment professional full-time football environment you're in now is what you've always sort of been striving for was it much of a an adjustment in terms of leaving that working environment behind as well um yeah d definitely um obviously for me i came from being an amateur player that 
with Wexford Dudes, we trained twice a week. We had a game the weekend and kind of any additional training um, I, I done myself, be it in the gym or, or on the pitch or w- w- with another team. Um, I think the biggest thing for me going into that professional environment is you're going in against girls that have been in professional environments before, um, that they've been doing it day in, day out, week in, week out for, for a number of seasons. And I think for me, finding my feet at that level and adjusting to that was definitely a step up. Um, but it, it wasn't one that I feared going into. It was one that, as you said, I, I, I've always wanted to do and I've always wanted to, to test myself and, and see what I can do in that environment. Um, in terms of here we are now coming um, towards the middle to end of October and it's still relatively new to me. Obviously, I signed in January, but there was a, a, a good spell there where obviously we were in lockdown and, and I was back in Ireland. So I was kind of excited um, to get back into preseason and um, kind of a, a fresh slate and um, to start on a level par w- with everybody and, and get used to that, that, that full time environment again. But it's definitely a, a breath of fresh air and not having to, to sit at a desk for, for eight hours to then go training or, or to go to to training before work um, obviously anything that I need any facilities or, or any programs that I need are on hand now and, and the club provide them and I think that that, that makes a, a big difference Okay good stuff and, and just final question for me just on the pitch in terms of the game this weekend I guess we can't or we shouldn't underestimate the, the motivation that Ukraine have here because you know they have three games left the, the, their two other games are against the teams below them but there's a lot for them to play for here yeah, definitely. I, I spoke about the, the game being in, in our hands in terms of what, what we bring to it. But in, in terms of if you flip it the, the other way, um, things are in Ukraine's hands as well. As you said, they've got they've got three games left. Um, obviously, we know that our final game is against Germany. So they know coming into this game, it, it's massive. Um, they know that possibly they underestimated us in the the first game, so they have a point to prove in in terms of that. So it's definitely important that we don't us underestimate them. As I said, it's going to be a, a cup final, sort of a, a winner takes all, and it's important that we put our best foot forward and, and we are focused and we know exactly what the task at hand is. And, and as I said, this week's training is going to be important for Friday's game. Thanks very much. Thank you.